Magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Tayo po ay nasa Bible study. Ako po si Pastora Teresa ng Christ the Answer City sa East Church, Katmon Malapot. Tayo po ay manalang. Panginoon, nagpupuli po kami at nagpapasalamat sa gabing ito na muli ay makikinig kami, mag-aaral kami ng iyong mga salita. Nawa o Diyos, pagpalain mo mga salitang ito na aming pag-aaralan. Ikaw ang manguna sa amin upang kami ay lumago, tumibay uh, sa aming buhay pananampalataya. We welcome you Holy Spirit right now. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Tayo po ay nasa pag-aaral at ang ating pong pag-aaral ay uh, ating pong pinamagatan na Partner in Life, Husband and Wife. Ako po ay isa ng ina, isa na po akong, meron na po akong asawa at ang asawa ko po ay si Pastor Mike. Uh, o, oh, uh, yun po ay aking desire sa puso ko na ako po ay magkaroon ng asawa na pastor at ang desire ko rin po ay magkaroon ako ay tun pa po na ako ay bata pa ang aking pong hinihiling ay magkaroon po ng minamahal na kristyano actually kalimitan po sa mga minahal ko ay kristyano po talaga Okay po. So, tayo po ay isama po yan, mga kapatid. Kung kayo po ay single, kung kayo po ay uh, krisyano, isa po yan sa panuntunan na sinasabi ng Biblia. Tayo po ay ah, uh, hindi lamang po taga, tagapakinig kundi tayo po ay tagasunod ng sinasabi ng Biblia na ang sinasabi niya po ay do not equally yoke to unbeliever wag tayong makipamatok sa di mananampalataya kaya nga po uh, mabuti po na ang ating kabiyak ay kik may pagkakakilala sa Panginoon. Yun po yung pinakamaganda. So, yun po yung in-desire natin sa ating mga puso kung tayo po ay bata pa, pagdating ng panahon, yun po ang ating pagdasal, pero yun po ay pagdating ng tamang panahon. At kung naman tayo ay nasa tama ng edad, yun pa rin ang ating pagdasal. Ang bigyan tayo ng regalo ng Diyos ng mana ng palataya na kabiyak na tayo po ay uh, simula na sabi po dito uh, what is a husband? sabi po kasi partner in life, husband and wife what is a husband? a married man considered in relation to his spouse Okay? Isa po itong may asawang lalaki. Isang may asawang lalaki na may relasyon sa kanyang kabiyak. Yun po yung husband. Dinasabi sa isang dictionary. Oxford. Husband connecting and keeping together the whole family according to Eastern Bible Dictionary. Yan. So, siya po yung nagkikip na nag pinapag-isa niya po pinapanatili niyang buo ang kanyang pamilya yun po yung unang-unang katungkulan ng isang asawang lalaki no ngayong pong buwan ay atin pong pinagdiriwang ang ating buwan ng mga tatay araw ng mga tatay, buwan ng mga tatay Happy Father's Day po sa ating mga kapatid na ama. Happy Father's Day po. Pagpalain po kayo ng Panginoon. God bless you. Uh, not only this month, but 
all throughout the years of your life. Sabi po sa International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, In the Hebrew household, the husband and father was the chief personage of an institution which was regarded as more than social organism. And as much as the family in primitive Semitic society had a distinctively religious character and significance, the house father, by virtue of being the family head, was priest of the household as such responsible for the religious life of the family and the maintenance of the family altar. So, sa, mga, sa Hebrew household, no? Sa pamilyang Hebreo, ang asawang lalaki at ama ay pinakapuno ng institusyon. No? Sabi nga, eh, mula kay Abraham, kay amang Abraham, lumaki na lumaki yung institusyon. Lumaki na lumaki yung society, yung social uh, group. Lumaki na lumaki or social organism no nang galing lang po unang-una kay Amang Abraham no siya po ay uh, ating father no father of many nation po siya so ang father uh, ang father po ang unang-una niyang dapat gawin ay maging priest of the household. No? Siya yung nag-aakay ng pamilya sa Diyos. No? O, mga anak, tayo ay manalang. Mga anak, tayo ay magbasa ng Biblia. Ito na ang panahon ng pagpupuri natin. Tayo ay mag-aral ng salita ng Diyos. No? Yun po yung unang-unang ginagawa niya. Yan po yung talagang dapat ginagawa ng mga tatay. Napakasarap po na ang ating mga anak ay maakay natin sa Panginoon. Dahil pagdating ng panahon, hindi po natin magiging sakit ng ulo ang ating mga anak kung atin po silang aakayin sa Panginoon. Praise God po. Marami po ako mga kapatira na nakikita ko po na ang kanilang mga anak ay naakay sa Panginoon. Kung kaya sama-sama po na naglilingkot sa Panginoon. Purihin po ang Diyos sa bagay na yan. As priest, he offered sacrifice to the family gods. As at first, before the centralization of worship, he did to Yahweh as the tribal or national deity. We see this reflected in the story of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And in the book of Job, this goes far to explain such records as we have in Genesis. Abraham was regarded as being the father of nation. It was customary. It would seem to assign a father to every known tribe and nation. Genesis 10. So the family came to play an important and constructive part in Hebrew thought and life, forming the base upon which the social structure was built, merging gradually into the wider organism of the clan or tribe and vitally affecting at last the political and religious life of the nation itself. So, sabi po din sa, sa Genesis, makita po natin yan sa Genesis 18, 17-18, no? Pagkatawag po kay Abraham, sabi po sa Genesis 12, 1-20, Abraham, the father of nations, was, was called by God to live in a new land, no? And later, God changed Abraham's name to Abraham, and he became the father of Israel. And Israel is not only Jacob, but the whole Israel, diba? Yung, the nation Israel, and many nations pa nga, no? The big religions, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, they recognize Abraham as their father. So, and even larger than that, pwede pong mag-extend pa yan because Abraham 
is the father of nation. Sabi po sa Genesis 17, 3-7, Abraham fell face down and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will be called Abraham. Your name will be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. Ba? Magkaroon ng nation eh, the Israel. And the whole nation. Marami nang kumikilala sa ating amang Abraham. No? So, the nations nakikilala sa ating Diyos, no? This nation and Abraham was the father of many nation na ito. Ang inaano po natin is husband, no? Ano po natin dito yung husband? The father of many nations, si Abraham po. Para po ba maging tatay? Madali lang kung sabihin maging tatay. Madali lang kung tatay, dati. Madali lang po yan. Marami pong tatay. Pero ang talaga po na magpakatatay, yun po mahirap. No? Mahirap po maging responsable sa mga raming bagay. Magpakatatay, maging malambing sa mga anak. Maging maayos sa mga anak. No? Hirap po yun. Pero please get po, kapag tayo ay nakatagpo ng kristyanong tatay, asawa, malalaman po natin na wow po yun. Dahil yun po ay regalo ng Diyos sa ating pamilya. Yung tatay. Yan. So, po yung pagkatao kay Abraham, no? Mula sa maliit na nation, maliit na pamilya lang si Abraham, lumaki na lumaki, no? Naging Israel na siya. Ngayon, father of many nations na siya. Hindi lang yung Israel. ba? The husband from the first had supreme authority over his wife. And children, in his own domain, his rule was well nigh absolute. The wife looked up to him as their lord. Genesis 18.12 He was chief compared, compared Arabic sheik. And to his, and to dishonor him was a crime to be punished by death. You can see that in Exodus 21.15-17. Sabi doon, curse. Okay? Curse yung yung uh, mag magdi-dishonor sa magula father and mother sabi po doon okay absolute faithfulness is required of the wife in general among eastern people women were lightly esteemed as in japetic nation they came to be later counted as state disorganized where slaves are disobedient to their masters and wives are on equality with their husbands is there a human being as Socrates with whom you talk less than wife than your wife than with your wife okay hindi kilala po rin dito na sabi po sa international standard bible encyclopedia that the husband is the supreme authority over his wife mas mataas po talaga yung husband sa kanyang wife and children uh, sila po yung mamumuno sa pamilya. Sila po yung titingin sa pamilya. And even Sarah called Abraham Lord and Master. So, ganun po po, ganun po ka-honor yung husband. No? He was chief compare Arabic chief. Chief po siya. Puno. Puno ng sambahayan, puno ng pamilya, 
puno ng society sa social group, yun po yung pamilya. Ang sheikh po kasi isang leader ng Arab. Yan po. And to dishonor him was a crime. No? Napakapangat po ng dishonor natin yung ating tatay ng pamilya. At absolute faithfulness is required of the wife. Kailangan daw po maging loyal tayo, maging faithful tayo ng mga asawa sa ating asawa. Yan. At yung mga Eastern people, sabi po ni Plato, disorganized po yung mga ganun. Wala po sa kaayusan yung mga slaves, mga alipin na sumusuway sa kanilang pinuno o masters at disorganized. Hindi maayos ang society or social group na tumitingin na pantay ang babae, asawang babae at asawang lalaki. So, kaya po ang Bible ay talaga nagtuturo ng tama. That the leader of the family is the husband. And wife should be submissive or over. No? Kailangan siya over yung husband. Wife is over, uh, husband is over his wife. Diba? So, kailangan daw po, sabi po ni Socrates, si Socrates, si Plato, kailangan kilala po yan sa science. No? Uh, ako po ay sa science teacher. Please get po sa akin profession. Uh, sabi po, wala, sabi po ni Socrates, sino daw po ang mas kakausapin natin? Dapat po ang mas kakausapin natin yung ating kabiyak. Wala na pong iba na higit pa na dapat natin kausapin. But from the first, among the Hebrews, the ideal husband trained his household in the way they should go religiously, as well as instructed them in the traditions of the family, the tribe, and the nation. It was due to this, in part at least, that in spite of the discords and evil incidents, polygamy, the Hebrew household was nursery of virtue and piety to an unusual degree and became a genuine anticipation of the ideal realized later in the Christian home. Basahin po natin yung sinasabi nila, no? Uh, kasi po sa Jew Jewish tradition, medyo may polygamy na po, no? Pero tayo po mga Kristiyano at sa Pilipinas, naniniwala po tayo sa isang kabiyak lang. Isang asawang lalaki at isang asawang babae. So, dun po tayo naniniwala. Basahin po natin yung mga supporting verses. 1 Corinthians 7.2 Sabi po sa 1 Corinthians 7.2 But since sexual immorality is occurring, each man should have sexual relation with his own wife and each woman with her own husband. Yan. Tandaan po natin yan. Dapat daw po gampanan natin yung sexual duty natin sa ating kabiyak. Sa ating asawa lamang po. Yan. Sabi po si Ephesians 5.25 Husband, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up to her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle, any other blemish but holy and blameless. And nakakatuwa po kung paano dapat i-present ni God, Jesus yung church, sa Lord, no? without blemish, blameless. So, tayo pong mga asawa, sana po, hindi po natin ini-stress yung ating mga asawa, kundi, supportan natin mabuti na financially, emotionally, spiritually, 
no? Para hindi po talaga sila na i-stress. Amen? Okay. So, sabi pa po sa ating minasa sa 1 Peter 3.7 Husband, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as ears with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. So, tayo po mga, kung kayo po ay husband, dapat po tayo ay nananalangin. Of course, we lead our, our family to family altar. Pero may makakahindor daw po sa ating panalang kung hindi po tayo maayos na pagtupad na ating tungkulin. No? Kailangan tinutupad din po natin yung tungkulin natin bilang mga asawa. Asawang lalaki, even po sa asawang babae. Lalo na po sa asawang lalaki, di ba? Mga husbands, kailangan po gawin natin po yun. Alang-alang po sa kalooban, ng Panginoon at ayon ay alang-alang po sa sinasabi ng Bible. Yan. Sabi po, use figuratively of the relation between Yahweh and His people. Tingnan po natin yung teksto na yan. Nawa mabasa po natin yan sa ating personal uh, study of God's Word. Pangalawa po, between Christ and His Church. No? May part po tayong binasa dyan na Kailangan i-offer ang mga in-offering ni Jesus and church as blameless, as uh, without blemish, no? Ganun din po gawin natin uh, sa ating mga asawang babae. Ako po babae, yan. Yan, ito po yung tungkol sa husband. Doon ba na po tayo sa wife? What is a wife? A married woman considered in relation to her spouse. No? Ito po yung may asawang babae na may relasyon sa kanyang asawang lalaki. No? Sabi po dito sa International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, the ordinance of marriage was sanctioned in paradise. No? Sinabi na po dyan sa Genesis 2.24, Okay, so Genesis 2.24 That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is, uni is united to his wife and they become one flesh. No? Kita po natin, iniwan ng lalaki at babae ang kanilang sari-sariling dating pamilya at sila ay naging isa, nagsama na sila, no? And because they are not no longer two but one, no? And that is ginawa na Lord, na Lord yun eh. Genesis pa lang 2:24. Yun po yung ordinance of marriage. At yung ordinance na yun monogamy po ang ating sinusunod. Monogamy. Na ano po ba yung monogamy? Isang lalaki, isang babae, sila lang po all throughout their life. ba? Diba? Kung buhay pa, kung patay na, syempre wala na tayo sa legal na kasunduan. ba? Diba? Yan. Yun po yung law na monogamy was sa original law under which a man lived. No? Sabi po sa biblical definition of a wife, the first biblical reference to a wife is found in Genesis 2.21-25. Partly, nabasa po natin yan, yung 24. When God made a, a woman from Adam's rib, here the concept of a one flesh relationship in marriage established. Kasi po, yung, yung si Eva, pinawa siya sa rib ni Adam. So, isa lang silang flesh. Hindi sila different flesh. The Hebrew word for a wife is ish. Isho. Which is the feminine form of ish, 
which means husband. So, ang ish po, husband. Pero ang isyo, wife na. Conceptually, as the woman was an extension from man, a word for wife is also an extension of the word for man. So, woman. Extension po siya ng word ng man. Woman. Likewise, the English word woman denotes a man with a womb. So, ang woman po pala is a man with a womb. Siya yung lalaking may matres. Yung <laughs> po yung sinasabi niya. In the Greek, the word for wife is gain, which is from the root gynomai. This is the same root as the word gynecology, which is the study of a woman or female. No? Sa Greek, ang wife po is gain. Ang root word niya is gynomai. Okay, kaya po pag may gynecology, ito po yung pag-aaral ng mga babae. Okay? Ito po, ano pa po? Meron po tayong mga role of a wife. Ano po yung role ng wife? Sabi po sa Proverbs 31, 10 to 31. Mabasahin ko po. A wife of noble character po yun. A wife of noble character who can find she is worth far more than robbers. Her husband is full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bring her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her fam female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigor vigorously. Her arms are strong for tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her love does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. Clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them, and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness or idleness. Her children arise and call, call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all her hands have done. And let her words bring her praise at the city gate. So, makita po natin yan sa Proverbs 31, 10 to 31. No? Kung paano ba, ano, ano po ba yung gagawin ng isang nanay o ina o asawa sa maghapon? Yan po yan. No? Hindi po tayo dapat nagsasayang ng oras, lalo na sa mga balita sa paligid or chismis po. Kundi sabi po dito, hindi tayo nagiging idol. Ano? Ibig po sabihin, wala pong patay na oras. Lahat productive. No? Kailangan po, ulang pa ang 24 hours para magawa po natin yung mga bagay na dapat gawin. Sa mga anak natin, sa pagtatahe, uh, sa pag-invest, sa pag-business, no? Ayan, yung merchant, no? Mga, mga, mga ngalakal po yan, eh. O sa gabi, natutulog na sila, ikaw, nakat nakatayo ka pa rin dahil marami kang ginagawa, no? Pero dapat, of course, yung health natin, naalagaan po natin yan. Basta, matulog tayo ng maaga at kumising tayo ng 
maaga po yun. Unless po siguro na hinihingi po ng pagkakataon, napaka-seldom naman po nun. Kailangan daw po nating magtanim ng mga vineyard, uh, halaan nating mag-work vigorously, no? Ibig sabihin, mabilis sa ating kilos, no? Uh, we trade, profitable trade. Ibig sabihin, hindi nagbabankrap, di ba? Kailangan pinag-aaralan po natin talaga, No? yung kung meron po tayong katulong na sinasabi natin yung madapat gawin nila, ganun po talaga yung, yung sinasabi daw po natin, may wisdom no, may wisdom sabi nga eh she can laugh at the taste to come no ah uh, Kaya na kailangan po talaga maghanda po tayo para sa kinabukasan na ating pamilya. Amen? Hindi pa po natin nagagawa. May panahon pa po. Gawin po natin yung mga bagay na yun. Hindi uh, po tayo ng karunungan sa Lord. Paano tayo mag-iipon? Paano tayo magtitipit? Paano tayo makakapag-tanim sa vineyard? Paano tayo makapag-trade? Yan po yung mga dapat natin gawin. Ano? Mahala po ang Lord dyan. Basta, ang isip po natin, nasa Lord, pangalawa lang po yung mga bagay na sinabi po. Yan. Tandaan po natin, ang isip natin, nasa Lord, kung paano natin gagamitin yung time natin, magpapagamit po tayo sa Lord. Sa ministry ng Lord, magpagamit po tayo upang marami pang kaluluwa ang ma-akay natin sa Panginoon. Amen? So, yun po yun. Ano po yung role of a wife? The wife is to be discreet. Pag sinabi pong discreet, discreet, tingnan po natin, it says a woman's virtue and discretion is priceless. She keeps the secret details of her intimate family life separate from others. She is devoted to being go good to her good her husband and does not gossip to others about him. She shares her heart with him as he does with her. This verbal intimacy and private time develops a deep trust and strengthens their bond to one another. Pag siya pa po ang discretion, yung discretion, ito po yung uh, paghakbang o pagpapasya na may katalinuhan. No? Kailangan po matalino po yung ating pagpapasya. Lalo na po dito yung tinutukoy nila na kapag lahat naman po ng tao may kahinaan, hindi po ba? Hindi po natin sinisiwalat yung mga kahinaan na yun. Kung, kung salip, atin po itong pinagdarasal at atin pong sinasabi sa ating kabiyak upang kanya ma-overcome at gumawa na rin po tayo, maging asset po tayo na para ma-overcome ngayon ay gumawa rin po tayo ng ating makakayang hakbang. Iba po. So, yun po. At maganda rin po na yung ating husband o wife ay wala tayong ibang mas kausap kundi siya no siya yung nakakaalam ng lahat ng bagay sa ating buhay okay you develop a time to strengthen the bond di ba yun po yun lahat lagi tayong may quality moment sa ating mga kabiyak pangalawa po the wife is to be chaste A wife must be chaste or sexually faithful to her husband and provide for his sexual needs. 1 Corinthians 7, 1-5 says that the wife's body belongs to her husband and that she should not withhold herself from, his, from him sexually. Basahin po natin yung mga nabanggit. Pwede po natin i-take note at basahin po natin personally sa 1 Corinthians 7 at Matthew 19. 
This is for two reasons, to meet his sexual needs and to protect him from temptation to have sexual affair. Likewise, she abstains from things that might lead her to be physically attracted to someone other than her husband. So, kailan po yung wife? Uh, it to be chase. Pag sinabi pong chase, um, sabi po dito sexually faithful to her husband. No? Kailangan po tapat tayo sa ating asawa. Amen. Kasi, huli po yung ating katawan. So, huli po siya. Kailangan po, nilalaan po siya para sa ating asawa. Kung tayo ay may asawa. Kaya yung pong ating katawan ay eh para po sa ating asawa. Hindi na po natin po yung pag-aari. Kundi yan ay pag-aari na rin ng ating asawa. Yan. Kaya kung may, may pangangailangan po siya, kailangan po, isupply po natin. Hindi na yung, dahil hindi na po tayo dalawa, kundi iisa na po tayo. Pangangailangan na rin po natin yun, kumbaga. Hindi, hindi niya lang pangangailangan, kundi pangangailangan din natin. Pareho na po. Pangatlo po, the wife is to be the keeper of the home. Sabi po sa Genesis 1, God gave mankind dominion over all living things on the earth, which includes the husband's dominion over his household. However, the wife has the role of keeping or managing the household as the sub-dominion. This requires a wife to submit to her husband's leadership, not in a way that is demeaning but is in sync with supporting one another as believers. Yan ba? Mababanggit po natin dito kung ano po yung mga sinasabing keeper of the home. Keeping of the home includes normal household duties such as cooking, cleaning, grocery shopping, decorating, and managing household affairs in addition to other things. This is not to say that the husband cannot do any of these things and should not help where needed. But God has given this role to the wife. When a wife keeps a home, it creates an environment to which her husband can come home and share time with his wife. It also creates an environment where children can be raised with structure and order. Sabi pa po, this helps establish the family dynamic as one that is devoted to loving and supporting each other and establishing a family of, uh, a family way of doing things that is in keeping with God's charge of how to raise children and run a home. Ano po din po sinasabi sa Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 9? Sabi po doon, the wife should be the manager of the home, the keeper of the home. Lalo na kung ang babae ay nananatili sa bahay. Ako po kasi ay nagtatrabaho. So, pero I see to it na pag nasa bahay ako, meron akong bagong ginagawa sa bahay namin. Sabihin, iba ko yung ayos, mas pinapaganda ko siya, mas maganda siya sa paningin, ganun po yun. So, mas malinis po siya, dadatnan ko siya ng malinis, iiwanan ko siya ng malinis, ganun po. So, pwede tayo, depende po sa pag-uusap niyan kung paano po kayo uh, magtutulungan, paano maayos yung bahay. Kasi po kami ng aking asawas, Pastor Mike, ay teamwork po kami. Mas mabilis ko pong natatapos ang mga gawain kapag kami po ay magkasama. So, siya po yung taga-kumpuni. Yun po, minsan ako nagpipintura, minsan siya. So, ganun po. So, siya po yung taga-kumpuni kung siya, ano yung mga may aayusin sa electricity, sa, sa mga pupukpukin o kung ano man. So, nas, nasa atin po yun. Dapat po tayo ay keeper of the home. No? Para maganda yung bahay, ay yung kalalakihan ng mga anak natin, 
maganda. No? Po. So, ganun po yung sinasabi dun sa Proverbs 31, 10 to 31. No? Hindi po yung idol, yung ating mga kamay, lalo na kung may lakas po tayo, di ba? Ako po, galing ako sa sakit o karamdaman last year, one year na po, no? Pero praise God na dinugtungan ng Diyos sa aking buhay at praise God na marami na po akong nagagawa ngayon uwi. Praise God po. No, habang tayo ay malakas, gumawa po tayo ng, ng buong husay. Amen? Sabi po sa number four, the wife is to be spiritually minded. Although the husband must provide for the wife's spiritual needs, she must develop a close relationship with Jesus Christ so that she can model Christ. To model Christ as a wife, she must model Christ as a woman. This is because Christ is the cornerstone and the word of God is the foundation of all that we say and do. When a wife strives to model Christ, she influences her husband with her godly behavior as she fulfills her role motivated by her love of Christ. She demonstrated reverence for her husband and sets a Christ-like example for her children. No? Bagamat ang husband daw po ang leader na mag, mag, dapat manguna sa family altar, sa religious activities, sa religious practices, sa prayers, sa pagpapasa ng Bible, sa pagpunta sa church, sa pagtatites, yan yung mga dapat na gawin. Sa pag-evangelize, sila yung dapat manguna. Pero ang wife daw po, dapat po i-model niya si Kristo. Tayo po mga taga-sunod ni Kristo, dapat Christ, Christ, little Christ po tayo talaga, Christian, na i-model po natin si Kristo. Sinabi po sa, sa Proverbs 31, 10 to 31, kung paano po maging mabuting wife, hindi po ba? Kaya, model po natin sa kaya natin yung bagay na sinasabi sa Proverbs 31. Amen? Ang akin po, ako po ay personally natutuwa sa aking ina. Nila po ang aking ina ay uh, mabuting tagasunod, mabuting wife ng aking ama. No? Dahil ang aking ama po ay hindi pa po Christian, pero nadala niya po sa pagiging Christiano ang aking tatay. Sisimba na po siya. Dahil po, iba po kasi ugali na aking tatay. Napaka, dati po kasi siyang police at medyo hindi lang basta ganun. Pero talagang tigasin po talaga yung tatay ko. Pero dahil po, minomodel po ng nanay ko ang pagiging kristyano. Nadala niya po ang aking tatay. At nakakakita rin po ako ng ibang pamilyang kristyano na nakakahikayat nang hindi mana ng palataya sa kanilang pamilya dahil why they model Christ in their life. Amen. Yun po yung dapat natin gawin. Dahil yung ating po mga anak, hindi po natin mahihikayat sa ating pananampalataya kung hindi po natin model si Kristo. Yung ating mga kamag-anak, yung ating kapamilya, yung ating kapitbahay, Nahihirapan po tayong maakay sila kung hindi po natin imamodel si Kristo. Amen po? Sabi po, the wife models the church in the marriage relationship. It says that marriage is a model of a relationship between Christ and the church. This means that a godly husband must love his wife like Christ loved the church first. He seeks to provide for her physical, emotional, spiritual needs above his own needs. He does this as a servant leader to inspire his wife, not intimidate her with which leads to conflict. The wife should seek to encourage and reverence her husband to be more like Christ. Like him, serving her husband should be out of desire 
to inspire him to be what God has called him to be as the church is to Christ, so must the wife be to her husband. With this attitude, the marriage will be fruitful and serve as a model to others of God's relationship with us. No? So, dapat iminomodel nga po ng wife, asawang babae, ang um, paano nga iglesia is blameless, is without blemish, without spot, without wrinkle. Ganun din po dapat yung wife sa isang relasyon or marriage relationship. Amen? So, gawin lang po natin yung best natin na maging katulad po tayo na iglesyang nais ni, ni Christ na iharap sa ating Ama. Amen? Magagawa po natin ito dahil hindi po sa sarili natin kakayanan pero dahil sa kakayanan na na the fact that God is with us. Amen po? Sabi po dito, number one, our husband, our wife, our children, our family. No? They are God-given. They are God's gift. Pwede tayong bigyan ng alas, ng pera, ng mamahaling damit, mamahaling sapatos, mga branded things, items, pero walang makakapagbigay ng mabuting asawa, mabuting kabiyak kundi ang Diyos. Walang nagbigay sa atin ng ating mga anak, kundi ang Diyos. Walang nagsabi, nagbigay ng mabuting pamilya, kundi ang Diyos. These are God-given. Sabi po dito, as the Lord gave Adam Eve as partner, so are you. Amen? So, yan po yan. So, Bigay po tayo ng Diyos ating mga kabiyak. Pangalawa po, they are lifetime partners. So, they are no longer two but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. Sabi po sa Matthew 19.6. So, hindi na po sila dalawa, kundi isa na. No? Kapag ito po ay may asawa, alam mo po yun na you are spiritual together and you are physically together. No? Hindi na kayo isa. Hindi na kayo dalawa, kundi isa na kayo. Diba? Yan po yun. Yan. Sabi pa po, sa last thing, uh, the husband and the wife should show love and respect. Kasi po, para po yung magkakambal, hindi po talaga sila mapaghiwalay. Kapag may love, may respeto. Each of you must love his wife as he loves himself and a wife must respect her husband. Ephesians 5.33 no? Dapat po talaga mahal yung wife at yung wife should respect the husband. No? So, pag may respeto, may iwasan natin may dishonor yung ating kabiyak, no? Hindi po tayo gagawa ng bagay na ikakapahiya niya, no? Ako po natutuwa na uh, halos actually araw-araw po ako sinusundo at uh, hinahatid na aking asawa. No? Uh, in a way, masaya po ako doon. Dahil busog po ako sa love and respect. Praise God po. Uh, sa pamamagitan nun, nararamdaman ko po na ako po ay talagang hindi lamang po yun. I know na marami pong para, paraan at pagkakataon na nararamdaman ko ang love and respect. Dahil ang aking asawa po ay isang pastor at isang taong may takot sa Diyos. Yan po. Kaya po, na-encourage ko ang ating mga kabataan na tayo ay umanap 
ng taong may pagkatakot sa Panginoon. Yun po ang unang-una nating hanapin. Taong may pagkatakot sa Panginoon. At ang lahat ng bagay, iaagis niya. All the other things, God will make it straight. Yun po. So tayo po ay manalangin. Salamat po sa pagsama niyo sa akin sa gabing ito. Lord, uh, we thank you sa amin pong uh, pagbubulay-bulay sa iyong mga salita about the husband, about the wife. Lord, panamin pong salamat. Uwa, i-bless mo ang salitang na itanim sa aming puso na wa ito ay aming uh, may isa buhay, aming kami ay matuto sa iyong mga aral. Maraming maraming po salamat, Lord, and we pray that you bless our families, ano man ang sitwasyon, ang aming pamilya, na wa ikaw ang umabot sa aming mga sitwasyon. Salamat po, O Lord. Ito po ang aming panalangin. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Help me, Lord.